Hello, my name is Jack Dulles, Director of Training here at Tulsa Welding School, and today we're going to talk about aluminum welding. Where is aluminum welding actually used? Aluminum welding is used on planes, boats, motorcycles, aluminum blocks, uh, all in the uh, round salt water. So this, this aluminum can be used all over the place, honestly. Uh, and so I want to show you a little bit today about some, how to weld aluminum the proper way, kind of the do's and don'ts, if you will. So let's first talk about the machine. So we got the machine set up. I know there's a lot of buttons here and things, but basically we got it set on AC for our alternating current, and we're going to run it around 150 amps. Then we got our TIG rig set up. Okay, I got my tungsten in here all the way I like it all set up. Uh, I'm going to run my stick out a little bit farther than I normally do with doing aluminum just because I want to make sure that I can see the puddle very well. Also, I don't sharpen my tungsten to a very sharp point. I actually kind of make it more like a pencil. Uh, when you run AC, it's going to cause it to kind of ball up a little bit. If you get a very sharp point, a lot of times the tip will want to ball off, break off to the side, you know, cause it to wander. So don't get a super sharp point. Just keep it down more like a pencil lead. And then, like I say, once you hit the AC, it will naturally cause it to ball up a little bit. But what we're going to do today is we're going to run on some aluminum plate. Got some here already prepped and ready to go. Make sure your aluminum's always been cleaned and prepped and ready before you start welding on it. We're going to run on some 5356 aluminum today with some 4043 uh, aluminum wire. Okay, and basically what we're going to do today is we're going to fire up. Once you get a glassy, liquidy puddle, then you're going to be ready to take your metal. Then we're just going to dip our metal in as we've got a nice little travel speed running along. Okay, so it runs off your foot pedal. It runs off multiple ways. You can have a foot pedal, you can have a thumb dial. There's lots of ways that it can remotely be ran. But we're going to run off of the foot pedal. And think of it as like your gas pedal, okay? So if you want to drive, if you want the car to run at 150 miles an hour and you got the pedal to the floor, well then remember you got to drive that fast. You know what I mean? So if you're going to drive like Miss Daisy and you want to do 60, then you also got to drive, you know, like Miss Daisy. So it really just depends on your travel speed, about how fast you need to go, how much amperage you're running goes with how much uh, travel speed you're going to run. So let's actually do some welding. Y'all ready? All right. Everybody good? Here we go. So what we're going to do here is once we fire up, I'm going to look down in here. I want to wait and let my puddle start to get a glassy, liquidy puddle. If you can look down in here, you'll start to see starting to get glassy and liquidy. Once you get that glassy, liquidy puddle, then it'll let you know you're ready. You're ready to put your metal in. And you're just going to drip it in nice and smooth. Just taking your time. Okay, and that's how you run a nice little smooth bead. And we're going to go through today, and I'm going to show you a couple more good times, and then I'll show you the do's and don'ts, if you will, you know, as when you're welding, what's not to do and what to do. So let's run another good bead here, and then we'll go into some, the, some of the don'ts. All right, let's run a couple beads here. Once again, you're going to fire up, ease down onto the pedal, slowly increase your amperage. Once you get a glassy, liquidy puddle, you're ready to start welding. Okay, that's how we run a nice couple of nice smooth beads. Let's run one more and then we'll go to the don'ts. Okay, here we go. Like I say, slowly push on the pedal. As it stabilizes, as the arch stabilizes, you'll start to see a glassy, liquidy puddle. That lets you know the metal is ready. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you some do some don'ts, okay? So what's going to happen first is I'm not going to get my metal hot enough, and you'll actually see where the metal's not going to even stick to the plate. And then as I go down, I'm going to show you as it gets too hot and what it looks like when you're too hot 
and you're not running with enough travel speed. So first, this is when it's too cold, okay? You don't have your plate hot enough. Here we go. So once you increase your heat, and you don't get the metal hot, this is what's gonna start to happen. You're gonna see on the plate, you can watch my rod. This is what happens when you don't get the metal hot. You can see it's not one to spread out crowning up, up on the bead real bad, it's not good, this is too cold, this is where the base metal wasn't hot enough and you're running not enough heat, alright, so those, you can see the bead, it looks terrible, it's all crowned up, built up on top of each other, I could probably knock it off there just because it's not really even sticking to the plate, so now let me show you what it looks like running it too hot. Oh, having a little technical difficulty. Okay. Too hot. Here we go. You can see the beads super wide, super flat, burning into the metal, basically just melting the metal away and digging down into the base metal. It's not good. And now you can see the results. It ends up with a very wide, flat bead. Uh, it's burned through the metal. If we flip over this piece of metal here, you'll actually be able to see where I've actually ruined the metal here. I burned through it on the other side, and that's not good. I'll show you. You can see on the back side here how it's burned through the metal. And you basically have ruined this metal. It can be fixed, but it's not good. That's what you want to try to avoid. This is overheating your metal and getting aluminum too hot and it starts to burn through and blister your metal. So this is aluminum welding. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple other uh, laps and things just where you can see them. Um, and then we will uh, show you something else. All good? So let's do a lap joint real quick. Let me prep my metal. Here we go. Got it tacked there. We got it tacked. Okay, so we're gonna run a little lap bead here. Change my angle just a little bit because I wanna make sure I get down in the groove. Same thing applies. Make sure you got your base metal good and hot. Once it's all hot and ready to go, it will take it and go right on in there. Let's try it, here we go. I make sure I get both my plates hot. Once both plates are hot, put my rod in there and melt the rod in. Okay, and we got us a nice little lap joint there. And this is welding aluminum. Okay, so that was a little bit about aluminum welding. Obviously, this can be ran, you know, in many different uh, positions as far as your verticals and T-plates and things like that. But this was really just a little tutorial about, uh, you know, how to set up and how to run proper beads, the kind of do's and don'ts, if you will, of welding aluminum. So it's really just about learning the fundamentals I just showed you, and then getting out there and practicing. It's really about being underneath the hood, spending some time practicing, it, and you can learn this as well. So thank you for watching today about aluminum welding, and uh, looking forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you. Hey, 
everyone. I hope you learned something new today from our video. And if you want to stay up to date and you want to become a better welder, then subscribe to our channel. And if you want to watch the newest videos and the baddest videos of me welding it all up, then check this video out right here.